20 years later. In a cozy room, two people were sitting on a large couch. He's on one side, she's on the other. Until a few minutes ago, the air had been thundering with reproaches, angry words hurting his chest, broken glasses shrieking hysterically, shoes, shirts, and jackets whistling through the air flying into the open suitcase. And then he took the watch she'd given him for the first anniversary of his wrist and tossed it into the fireplace. The sound of the broken glass was like a gunshot. She stopped crying. He stopped screaming. Suddenly there was no more strength, no more words, and no more tears. They sank without strength onto the couch and watched as if mesmerized as the flames destroyed not just the watch, as if mesmerized as the flames destroyed not just the watch, but a symbol of the time they had allowed it for love. They started silently at the fire blazing in the fireplace while their thoughts hovered beneath the high ceiling. I hate you. And now, have I lived with you for 20 years? 20 years. They flew by like the blink of an eye. Probably just as quickly another 20 as the other. Once they had dreamt that at the end of their lives, they would walk through the park holding their hands or sitting on the sand by the water's edge watching the sun go down into the sea we will surely have a house on the coast won't we? she looked hopefully into his eyes of course we will I will do anything for you the boy and the girl sat on the narrow, creaky bed in the dormitory room, huddled close to each other, a government desk, a closet, and two nightstands were all their belongings. And yet, the little room was cozy. She had hung beautiful curtains over the windows, put pots of plants on the windswill, and her table was covered with a tablecloth that her grandmother had embroidered especially for their wedding. There was a porcelain tea set on the table, a present from her friends, and her feet were buried in the fluffy nap of the carpet, which her parents had given her, making the room luxurious. They lived in the dormitory for seven years. Their son and daughter were born here, and the young couple was given an apartment by the company where the head of the family worked. It was a joy. Two rooms in their own kitchen. It was small, but it was its own. He worked hard. He had to make repairs and buy furniture. And he also wanted his wife and children to have nothing. Then they started timidly talking about bigger apartment. Do you remember that we also wanted a house on the seashore? She said smiling. He remembered and did everything possible to make their dreams come true. A friend suggested organizing a joint business. The business went ahead. A few years later, there was a big apartment and her own house. Although not on the coast, but 30 kilometers away from the city, with a fireplace and a cozy terrace. In the evenings, after she put the children to bed, she wandered through the house, swept the missing dust, rearranged the statues on the shelves, lit a fire in the place, poured a cup of chamomile tea 
and climbed on the coach with her feet. He returned very late, but she never went to bed without him. She waited, reheated dinner several times and she kept thinking. Was it supposed to be like this? Was all this, the fireplace, the beautiful furniture, the fancy appliance, and the two cars in the garage, given in exchange for the time we could be together? Do you want to go back to the dorms again? Six net to each other on the small hard bed and dream of a house this big? Her subconsciousness, mine asked sneeringly, and she didn't know what to answer. Ideally, she wanted a house, wealth, and a beloved husband who would always be there for her. Everything at once is impossible. Her subconscious was sane and she poured herself a glass of wine to drown out its voice. One, two, and pleasant warmth poured over her body and the world became calm and comfortable. And then the front door would slam and she would fly into the hallway, snuggle up to him and ask him tenderly, Why are you so late again? You know everything, he answered. On weekends, the whole family was sure to go out. Beginning on Wednesday, she came up with a program, one that was interesting to every member of the family. In the evening, the son and daughter would stay home alone, and dad and mom would go to the movies or theaters or restaurant. Outwardly, everything was fine, a modal happy family. But she sensed something was wrong. He was becoming quiet and rigid, withdrawn into himself a lot, smoothly dismissed her when she was pestered with a cough tenderness, and later returned from work. And one day he did not come at all. She sat on the couch by the fireplace till morning. She drained a bottle of wine and fell asleep at dawn. Her sleep was short and shallow, she could hear the alarms ring in the children's room upstairs, her son and daughter scurrying around the house, getting ready for school. And she half slept, thinking, now who's going to take them to class? As if in answer to her thoughts, the front door slammed and a cheerful resounding voice sounded. Kids, are you ready? Get in the car. She struggled off from the couch and strode in the hallway. Her husband was as fresh and clean-looking as ever, and mischievous sparks danced in his eyes. I see, she whispered and slapped her hand on his freshly shaved cheek. He recoiled and raised his hand to strike back, but then the children came running into the hallway fidgeting with the jackets and shoes. We'll talk tonight, he said dryly, and left the house. So they talked. She learned that for many years she sat on his neck and that he was tired of this monotonous life and that he only put up with it for the sake of his children. And yes, I have another woman. I am a man. I have the right. He did not lay a finger on her, but he beat her with words. She threw glasses at him, but hit the wall all the time, and he yelled, hysterical. Good things the kids were staying in town with their grandparents. I didn't see this nightmare. And then he threw the clock into the fireplace. Strange, she thought, looking at the flames devouring them. Why hasn't he bought another one yet? 
wearing an old watch given to him by his tired wife. That's it, he thought. Our shared past is gone. His cell phone rang. I'll be there soon. Forever. He threw in briefly. He could hear the shrieks and gasps on the phone. I'll explain everything later. He pressed hang up, got up from the couch, and suddenly collapsed like a fallen man. Friday is a critical age. You need to take care of your heart. The words of the doctor who had recently given him a cardiogram flashed through his head and he fell into an abyss. Sitting in the rickety chair by the hospital bed, she looked at her pale husband and mentally turned back and forth between him and the Almighty. Three days ago, I wish you were dead. Forgive me, Lord, for these thoughts. Do not take him away. Let him not be with me, but alive. I will not hate him. I will not judge him. It is not a man's business to judge, but yours. Lord, I love him so much. Voices were heard in the corridor. They were getting closer and clearer, and soon she was able to make out. Carl, you cannot go to him. I am the wife. What are you talking about? Then who is in his room now? When the door opened, she did not turn her hat, but clutched his hand tightly. Go away! She hissed her behind her. Go away! She hissed behind her back. You've given him a heart attack. You want to ruin him, don't you? Women, pleaded a nurse who ran in after. Let's talk about it, not in the hospital. And somewhere else. Alice, came a faint voice. He came to his senses. It wasn't her name he called. It was someone else's name. She darted out the door and didn't hear the rest of the sentence. Go away, Alice. Mom, do we have to leave? The door was capricious. Why do we have to live at Grandma's? What happened? That is coming back from the hospital and we're not there? If you two are fighting, I want to stay with him. I have my own room here and it won't be there. Shut up and do as your mother tells you. The son threw his things into his traveling bag and tamped them down with rage. She knew why he was angry. Yesterday at the hospital, while visiting his father, he had run into that red hat in the room. The boy was 16 now. He understood everything. He was silent and sullen during the day. And in the evening, he couldn't stand it and told her what he had seen. When I came in, they were fighting. Daddy was telling her not to come again, that he didn't love her, but he loved you. How is it possible? Mom, to love and cheat? Things happen in life, son. She stroked his head and held him closer to her. As she had done when he was a child, sometimes a man is confused, lost in his life. Then sometimes happens and everything falls into place and something is doesn't. If he comes back, will you forgive him? I've already forgiven him. But it's better if we go away. Let daddy be alone. He needs time to think, to sort himself out. She kissed her son on the top of his head and added, Go to sleep, my good man. We'll live early tomorrow. Left alone, she stoked the fireplace, poured red wine into a glass, and climbed onto the coach 
with her feet. This may be the last time I do this. The thought of another hostess walking through her house was unbearable. She drained her glass in a gulp and filled it again with the tarred, heady drink. You'll think yourself to thus without me. She heard a familiar voice behind her. I was afraid to turn around. What if it was a hallucination? A mirage that would melt away if I looked at it. I escaped from the hospital. The mirage, sat down next to her on the sofa, and timidly touched her arm. You never came to see me. I was afraid I would never see you again. And what about Alice? She asked in a whisper. Still afraid to look at him. Instead, he knelt down in front of her, buried his face in the folds of her dress. I'm so sorry. I know you can. You must, because without you, I would die. I don't need anyone else. I'm back. She understood what he meant. The man who loved her more than life had returned. The man they'd snuggled up against each other on the round, narrow bed in the dormitory, dreaming of a house by the sea. She could feel in her skin that everything was going to be all right now. She sank down beside him on the floor, wrapped her arms around him, and whispered. Welcome back. In a cozy room, two people were sitting on the floor in front of the fireplace. They stared at the fire, and held hands tightly while their thoughts hovered beneath the high ceiling. I love you. I want to live twenty more years with you, and in this life, and the next. I love you so much.